Do we do we want to just get started with reviewing the minutes? Is that okay with folks, or do we want to yeah. wait a few minutes? We'll get started. Okay. Yeah. So I will share my screen, and we'll just look at the minutes quick. There we go. So any any issues with the minutes? Anything we need to discuss there? I didn't see anything. Not in either. I printed it. And... It all look good to me. Yeah. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes as written? So um, moved. Motion to accept as written. I second. As written. <laughs> okay. I, I third. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> you heard it? Aye. 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 No, I third it. He third it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, to say wait. all of our names, so. Oh, you're right. We do need to do the roll call. Okay, I'll just say names and you can say your voice. Maxine? Here. Just say I. Yeah, I. Aye. Jessica, I. <laughs> Jen? I. Faith? Hello. I. Linda? <laughs> Hi. Debbie. Hi. Don. Hi. Jim. Hi. Mark. Hi. Ponvi, we're uh, motioning to accept the minutes if you would like to vote. Ponvi, can you hear me okay? Um, I, oh, we see. can hear you. Oh, hold on. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Okay, so um, did you want me to accept uh, to vote on accepting the minutes? If you could, please. Yes, I. Uh, I. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good timing. That means you didn't miss a thing. So, <laughs> um, should I go ahead and pull up the director's report? Yep. I'm ready to move there. Okay. All right. All right, Barb, do you want to walk us through it? Yeah, so um, I submitted the ARIS report and Jessica came and signed it. It was due uh, tomorrow, so we're a little bit ahead of schedule, which is always good <laughs> in case there's a problem at the end. Um, so I have to do the financial report by October 16th, so I'll be busy with that. And um, then there's an explanation, which I went over last time about what's in there. Um, so the waiver, there's an application which is due October 16th. It doesn't, it only looks like one page simple application that I'll do. And then the rest of it's due November 6th. Oh, Jessica, did you find out about that letter from you and me? So you know what's so funny? I had all those trustees on that call, including two reps from the MLBC and nobody knew. What? Um, I know. <laughs> I know, and Rob Savini was like, I, I should know this. <laughs> I was like, yes, you should. Yeah. Um, but uh, what they said to do was to just email um, Babbitt, Elizabeth Babbitt, Liz Babbitt. And that okay, she so when, when Jessica and I were going over the waiver, uh, we had different interpretations, but actually I think yours makes more sense. Anyway, we think we are supposed to hand in a letter together explaining the budget season and what happened, why we, the town you know, didn't give us the MAR. And then we have to have documentation, so I'll scan and email the uh, uh, budget that was voted on for the library at the town meeting. Then Vicki Morrow has to fill out um, a couple of pages of facts, like um, I just gave it to her today and I emailed it to her. Um, all kinds of, you know, town expenditure type things. And uh, everything is has to be submitted by email electronically this year. I also emailed Ed Gibson um, the waiver information and he has um, also to do an explanation of what happened with the town and um, the documentation of uh, that it isn't disproportionately cut. Actually, Vicki's sheet also proves that it's not a disproportionate cut. <coughs> um, 
And then I, I couldn't catch him today. He had a lot of meetings, so I'll, I'll go in person to explain it to him, but I've already talked to him about it uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I, there was a department head meeting this morning. I didn't put it in here. I forgot, but it's the first one since February uh, with Ed of the, sta of the whole department heads. And uh, we were supposed to meet with Ed last week. He had an emergency, but... The department heads met anyway because um, some people felt like they'd like to get together after such a long time. So uh, that was all very helpful. And I found out today that um, the schools only got a 1% cut. And so I found out some things that weren't clear at the time of the budget. But most of the departments did get a 4% cut, and some even got more. So I, we're, we're still in the range to uh, be okay for a waiver. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess um, what people didn't know at the time of the budget and hadn't been made clear was the teachers actually got raises. So, um, yeah, <laughs> anyway... What can I say? <laughs> but, um, not that they don't deserve it, but you can imagine how town employees um, feel. Mm. Now, were these because they they were they have a teachers union and that's part of the uh, negotiation that they do? Probably, but the real problem is that nobody apparently from the town was present when this was decided, so it wasn't communicated to cool. uh -huh. anybody. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think that I think it was a problem of communication. Nobody told you know, people who were doing the town budget. I guess mm -hmm. um, it was found out after. So, any questions on the heiress and waiver forms? <laughs> Good job. Yeah, Thank great. You. Thank you. I'm going to watch the waiver um, workshop again. So I went to it a while ago. I missed some of it. So I'm going to watch it again just to make sure I have it on. You know, I've never done it before. Okay. I so a, I have a question, um, Barb. I meant to mention this to you yesterday, but that errors report, is that, are you able to share a download with the group? Some of those statistics are kind of interesting. And I know some folks might be, talks about like how many items are circulated and you can compare this year to last year. And I don't know if folks might be interested. Well, in it's all, it's all going to be public. I, I can't go in and change anything. I'm not, I could look into it. I can see if I can share it. Um, well, just what you printed. I, I certainly can. Yeah. You, can you email that? Um, I don't. I'll have to find out. It's all done on something called counting opinions. Yeah. Um, once you submit it, I don't think you can even print it. So I'll have well, to. Barbara, uh, excuse me. Happens. Could you not the printed copy? Just leave it in. In the library, in the friend, in a in sure. the trustees box, and then the people who wanted to look at it, then they could they could look at it there. How does that sound? So, Barb, if you no. if you can print something, you can print it as a PDF, and then you would be able to email the PDF to us. I isn't that what I printed was a PDF? Yes. Yeah, so if if you printed a PDF, then that means you'd be able to email a PDF. I don't. I can't print it anymore. Once you submit oh, it, you only print it. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's on. kind of <laughs> within this counting opinions thing, and like they were clear to tell us you have to print it before, and you know. So, but yeah, I uh, no, I can ask Liz Babbitt. Um, but, but everything's made public, but it's kind of, you have to look on the MBLC site and it's with all the other statistics, you know, so it wouldn't, I don't think it would be quite as easy as looking at what I showed you, but I can ask her, you know, um, I'll email Liz since I have to ask her about the other question and, uh, and I'll ask her if I can share the PDF. Okay, um, because you might want the financial report. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, so you want me to leave a, a copy in the trustees box. Basically, um, we were down in a lot of things, but that's to be expected because we closed in mid-March and I did some, you know, percentage calculations and we were pretty much on target, you know, 
there, uh, there was more use of downloads, of course. Um, Be because of COVID, I guess I missed boot camp. But um, yeah, where, where's the trustees box, and where is it? <laughs> It's in the office. You, each staff member has a box. It's not, it's a little plastic, like what the, you put magazines in. I forget uh -huh. what they're called. And they're on a shelf um, toward my toward my office on the, if you're walking toward my office on the right. You know, you know sure you could corner. ask, but we have access. Uh... Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, there's can... a... Wait you a could... minute. It's top security, isn't it? I bet. <laughs> that pass. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, my, yeah. my concern is can we come at any time or just when the hours of the library well, is open? It's probably good if you just let us know, but yes, you can come in, you know, just give us a email me or something. So okay. if I'm not there, I'll tell the staff because when we're not open or doing curbside, you'd have to ring the bell, you know, and so a staff member might not know you were coming it's kind of like an appointment i guess or you can come in when we're open <laughs> yeah but yeah uh, trustees can come in anytime and uh as long as we know and there's usually not that much in the box but um did the new trustees get a little booklet you did didn't you jessica you got one a little booklet from the mblc jim maybe i did you, not you didn't so we have to see if you if there's another one is that helpful? That I'll helps? I'll look and see. I might I might have a couple. I'll I'll look and see. And if okay. it is, I'll I'll put it in the box. Does it have a glossary of terms? <laughs> That'd be great. Might be. Anybody know? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Let me see. I think maybe a couple of little terms. Oops. Is it that trustee pocket guide? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it, Maxine. Yeah. So I can always. I think I can get you one, Jim. If if uh, there's not one in there, or Convy doesn't have one. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it I didn't might mean it, to take time from the meeting, but no, that's what it's for. <laughs> sometimes just sit here and not know what anybody's talking about, you know, which isn't just, unusual. Just for keep me. smiling. That's all you have to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'd be glad to leave a copy there, and I will email Liz Babbitt at the MVLC to see if I can share it. If I can't share this, maybe I can share the financial report before it's submitted. Um, and I'll ask her that other question. So uh, our custodian, Dave Wells, repainted the library sign on East Street. Um, then the big, we had a big leak after a rainstorm about a month ago. Ed called the roofers. They sent this young bearded guy named Sawyer. I don't know why I should describe him that way, but anyway. And he went up there and <laughs> anyway... He did some things up there, and it the, some of the area was around one of the scuppers. Jim, you probably don't know what a scupper is, but I don't really know. <laughs> I it. don't, but I'm sure it's in the we guy. We found out about that <laughs> <It's not laughs> <in> years <the city. laughs> ago. No, it's part of the roof, Jim. It's part of the roof. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem with the scupper is it's this. I think it's made of metal. Am I correct, Maxine? Yeah. I, it's um, and then there's it's like a little gully where. Well, it's kind of sticks up. Um, it's like a boxy sort of weird thing, round, weird. If you look up at the roof, I think you can see them. I think there's two. And so um, the roof comes right up against it, and it sounds like it might have been a problem in that connection with the scupper. Also, he took some pictures up there and showed Robert and me his photos on his cell phone. And I, we didn't like the fact that there was this nail in a gully what was oh, the yeah. pulling there and um so he said he said did something to that but uh he said he'll come back when it rains hard again and he'll see how it's doing but he hasn't come back um so it's o over the staff room and we've never had a leak there so was there any internal uh leakage or damage oh yeah there was a huge flood i wasn't there when it happened it happened Dave, you know, comes in very early, and he actually caught it. And he, he's very good at that, by the way. <laughs> he, um, he cleaned it up. You know, it was very wet. And then Robert did, you know, took a lot of the wet stuff out and moved it out into the main part of the library to dry. 
So if you went there now, you wouldn't know, I don't think. Yeah. You know? but, I mean, if there's any damage, wouldn't the roofing company be liable well, for it at this point? They're liable if any. Yeah. So it's all going through Ed, right? And he okay. knows all about it. And um, But they put somebody, we have to find out if it was Dave, put the ceiling back up. I, and so um, we haven't noticed anything, but it wasn't um, a happy experience. <laughs> uh, that's too bad. Yeah. So, I thought um, Scuppers was a restaurant on the Cape. <laughs> it is, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had no idea what, it, what we even had. <laughs> With rooftop dining, probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah, around the Scupper. <laughs> So the CARES Act is taking a lot of time right now. Um, the town apparently got um, $500,000 from the CARES Act. And um, so that's what we've been buying all our, you know, masks and gloves and disinfectant and plexiglass and paper goods. Um, but I didn't realize we could buy other, you know, ask for other things. And Chris Fowles, who's a select board member, met with uh, Maxine Convy and me last Thursday. And she had this piece of paper from the state that explains what you could ask for. And we came up with a list of 10 or 12 items. Um, you know, like I have them listed here, some of them extra wages for the leader at the door when we're open and for helping with curbside that's what robert's doing he's volunteering he's laid off work temporarily if we didn't have him it would have been really hard so we're going to ask for that extra wages for the um you know uh custodian um let's see zoom accounts uh outdoor tent for computer use um and or events heaters for the outdoors um, these were all things she said we could ask for, some things to do with our HVAC. Um, let's see, a vacuum. We were asking for a vacuum because we have a terrible vacuum that's like, I don't know, 30 years old or something, and it doesn't do very much. So it would be good to have an HVAC with HEPA for us because Dave has a really good one, but he brings it with him to each building. Oh. Oh. So... Um, I don't know if they'll approve it. And there was a big discussion at the department head meeting about this. And uh, department heads have asked Ed to meet with all of us as a group so um, we could talk about this because we'd like to spend the rest of the money down before the end of December when it's due. And it would be very useful, I think. So the whole thing there about um, what was it for? Um, Maybe we could aim for two Zoom accounts. Didn't you talk about that too? That could yeah, be I, I have that. Yeah, I have that in there, two Zoom accounts. But the reason we need two is one for oh, the I see staff. It, I'm looking at my notes. That's okay. Yes, good you took notes. I saw you doing that. Um, one's for the staff, one's for like the writing group. We don't really want to share it with them. You know, it's better to Forbes has separate ones for their book group and so on. So. That's not a whole lot of money. So Johanna helped and Lisa helped, Robert helped because it's a lot of work and I was doing the heiress and, but I still have a lot of work to do on it. But I was on the phone with the eight, our HVAC guy, Keith David from RK Solutions today, he called me back. We had a very long talk, <laughs> not the first one. So he said that uh, we could, he could do about a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars worth to try and see if the system would take a MER filter. You know about MER filters, everybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. I so, don't. Uh, so a lot of the schools are trying to get MER filters, but like Hampshire Regional right. has had to upgrade its whole HVAC in order to even accept them. And apparently um, ours probably could get a MER 11, uh, maybe higher. I think, but you know, maybe 15 is better, but... Uh, it's whether the system that you have can support it. He said he would he would look at the original plans to see what the percentage of intake and you know incoming air and outcoming air is. We need to know that. 
Um, he would check to make sure everything's working, and he would put the fan on all the time, make adjustments um, for that. So those are the things he could do, and he suggested we could ask for a certified balancer to check our system, and I guess them, they are very much in demand right now, as you would imagine. And then he said that would be a good start, and then uh, what you could do after that is get an engineer. So I'm on this local Zoom, and the West Hampton director said that the town has hired an engineer to check all the buildings. Oh, oh that's a good idea. But yeah. we aren't, the, our town, nobody has mentioned that. And so I don't know how expensive that would be, but I, I, I'm supposed to get this in right away, so I don't think I'm going to go call an engineer, but I'll start with this. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure they're going to give, approve all this because I'm not, it goes through Ed and the select board, but I will, you know, certainly hand it all in. So any questions on that? Well, I think they said they still, they still have like $300,000 left in that part Over. of the 550 that we got. Yeah. And that's right. for everybody. That's for fire and police and. Right, right. And they're going so, to get a second grant, they're hoping, so that this is going to get spent. Yeah, yeah. they're going to. So I also have to give Ed ideas for the second part. Yeah, some of this will probably fit on the second part. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like the fire chief, he wanted to have uh, administrative assistance to help him through curbside. He's really backed up. And he didn't. He asked for it, but nobody said he could actually start acting on it. So, you know. He would like to start acting on all these things he didn't know he could act on. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of money that could be spent out of that 350 that people kind of already wanted, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, did you say the fire chief is looking for curbside? Was, no, I, I didn't. Uh, sorry, did I say curbside? And I, then, got, I don't know because I can't hear you well, I think. At some point. I it's for fires in mobile homes. <laughs> it's an administrative assistance. <laughs> he hands out fire extinguishers. You go put out your own fire. <laughs> the fire department was here at one o'clock last one o'clock in the morning last week because one of the owners, all her alarms went off and she couldn't mm. get them off. So oh. the fire oh. and the police and everybody were out over at unit blah blah blah. So <laughs> I was wondering about curbside. <laughs> <laughs> well, they might have a curbside for permits and things. Maybe. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 No, it wasn't curbside. It was somebody to help in the office. He has nobody. And oh, okay. Uh, anyway, so, but they, you know, they need a lot of stuff. So I, I, you know, yeah. I think they're going to be putting in for that. But, but it was very helpful meeting with Chris Fells. And um, do you want to add anything, Maxine or Convy, about our meeting? I don't know. No, I, I think you, you explained it well in that. I mean, the notes that I took and whatever, basically about the things that we could get and couldn't get, or she was really very helpful. Yes. I mean, I don't think I would have ever thought about some of those things, like a tent outside with flap, flaps and mm. ears and, you know, different things. Or um, I, I got a couple other things, too, but I haven't read your your part there, I was well, reading mine, but no, you had yeah. a lot of good information. I didn't put everything down here. I think well, my list is like 12 items, but if you want to, I'm sure we got the same thing, but you could email me if yeah, you No, I just took notes, that's all, and yeah. because I can't remember a lot sometimes. Well, the, Keith David from RK Solutions, it's the same thing as everybody else. They're all learning about COVID. They're not going to guarantee anything, you know, I mean, he, you know, he's been reading up on it a lot, and it's just the way it is, you know, things will be coming out about COVID for a while. So they can't guarantee anything, basically, you know, and they just are trying to keep up like everybody else. That's as far as the HVAC people. Um, curbside pickup is going very well. Uh, we did 35 curbside bags yesterday. We've reached 1,360 total. Um, and now our hours, uh, we expanded them a tiny bit. So it's Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 6, Saturday 10 to 1. 
So on reopening, I talked Jerry Fonson into letting us open up a few more hours. So Tuesday, 3 to 6. And I told her that we've had about three patrons who say they work and they can't come at one. Oh, yeah. So uh, I talked to the staff and... Uh, we're going to do Tuesday from 3 to 6. I should let you know, Tuesday is a really crazy day because we're closed Monday. So mm -hmm. there's all the phone calls, all the emails for curbside pickup. We get all these bins which have to be quarantined. And and uh, it's, and then there's all these stuff that's been in quarantine that has to be checked in. It's a huge amount of work. So having, you know, having it be open from three to six is that's why it's three to six and not earlier, because uh, it takes the staff that long to just catch up. There's all the pull lists where you, you know, pull the things off the shelf that are holes for other libraries and it builds up over the, you know, Saturday afternoon, Sunday and Monday. <laughs> As well, the, that makes sense, though, if, if we're really doing it for people after work then three to six is 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 more convenient for that group so yeah and, and that's nice could, it's nice that we can get a few more hours so that's wonderful absolutely yeah yes. the thing is uh emily who works on thursday and saturday uh is worried about she lives with her parents and one of them has immune problems and so that's why we did it tuesday and not thursday so, okay um so uh, Johanna's been having families um, two, three every Wednesday. That's we're open. This is our that was our fourth one yesterday. Time flies, um, and it's uh, been going very well. So thank God, <laughs> right? It's going well. Any questions on that? And of course, it's always subject to change. I mean, if COVID cases go up in Southampton or somewhere, Jerry is going to ask us to close, you know. But she's been very extremely helpful. And, um, you know, we're happy about the. I think you all know West Hampton Library closed for two weeks when they had that red part of their COVID mm -hmm. cases. And now they're open again. So, and they, they do two days a week of being open and oh so um some people don't want to come in for you know uh just browse they still want to do curbside so we still do a little curbside on on the day we're open too but not as much okay special town meeting is october 17th 10 a.m our security cameras and upgrade will be on it so yeah. It's really important. Yeah. I liked your description, Convy, of uh, minor vandalism. <laughs> well, ah. um, it's, I, I think it's important. And uh, well, are you want me to wait till because it's on the agenda and wait and talk about the security, or should Jessica? Do you want me to wait or or what? I mean, I think if that's what I think it's up to Barb. Barb did. Should Convy want to finish your... Well, why don't I, uh, Johanna, um, she's talking about Story Hour started. Cindy Di Diamond or Demon um, mm -hmm. is doing it. It's uh, two groups at the pavilion. People have to register. It's limited in number. Uh, it went very well yesterday. Um, so it's four family groupings around the tables in the pavilion. We're very lucky to be near the um, park. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are very happy to have these schedule events. They're happy to come in the library. They're happy to have curbside, everything, you know. Um, we don't get too many complaints. Mostly people are happy. So um, then she talks about family appointments between 10 and noon for 20 minutes. She sanitizes between each one. Uh, we we have opened up the windows. Uh, Keith said we could. I don't know what's going to happen in the winter, but right now we are. Um, and people have been very respectful, she says. So she started a new thing called, there's, it's called Book Bundles. It's on our website. I tried it. It's for using with the kids, and it helps them narrow their choices uh, for what they want. And then uh, it's on the website, and Johanna can put together the bundle for the family. And you should check it out. It's on the website. It's kind of fun. Um, another librarian passed it around to the listserv, and that's where Johanna got it. 
Um, so she talks in the next paragraph about the virtual programming, um, the new one from Kathy, who's that one. I don't know if you remember, she's doing this as part of a grant from Hampshire Hampton Conservation Group, so we don't have to pay for anything. And it's posted on YouTube, Wildlife on Woodlands. And then she had the a book folding yesterday, three adults and one child out in the pavilion. Um, and then she's planning a Halloween event, which Jerry did okay. Um, and she's she got a Polaroid camera. Kids are going to dress up in costumes. She's going to have a booth. She's going to take their picture. They can take home mm -hmm. and they're gonna have candy. And they're going to, you know, walk over socially distance to the library to get something. So. <laughs> And they'll have to register for that. And Do you know the date for that, Barbara? Uh, she does have a date, um, but she didn't put it in here. And, uh, you know, it'll, okay, so, because we had to get approval, so we just got the approval today. But uh, oh. it'll be in the new, e you're going to get an e-newsletter, which if you don't get it, let us know, and it'll have it. And then she'll post it on the website, and she'll put it on the flyer. So do you want me to email you the date, Linda? No, I'll read the newsletter. Yeah, she'll put it on Facebook, all the usual places. Yeah. Um, I did forget to mention that I went to a user's council meeting, which is CWRs. It was over three hours on Tuesday. Try being on Zoom for that mm -hmm. long and then going to work. But anyway, um, oh, my gosh. So I wasn't able to go to very many of these when it was in person because a lot of times they're all over the place and it's hard you know to drive somewhere farther away so that's one good thing about zoom is i've been going to more user council meetings that's where the directors vote on things <laughs> that affect us every day and then the other thing is ed did come by with somebody from the green communities grant um they wanted to look over the building so hopefully that's moving along that should be our light should be in there I mentioned it to Ed. Okay, yeah. And they wanted to see our, you know, HG&E bill, polio gas and electric, and that kind of thing. Good. Okay. That's, that's good. Yep. I don't know what you're doing with all your time, Barbara. Uh, it, it, you know, I'm busier now than I ever was when we were <laughs> before the pandemic. I think a lot of people, you know. Mm -hmm. think that way but it's all hit you know it's all hitting at once uh, the state reports the waiver the cares Act. <laughs> I, I you know you know, i don't think you want to be around me too much when i'm there <laughs> i feel like i have to sequester myself in the office i just it's what can i say mm -hmm. looking forward to when i can go back to ordering weeding and you know the normal <laughs> Uh, Columbia, do you want to talk about the um, security? Yeah, event? yeah. Um, well, uh, Maxine and I walked around the the library, but um, I and I also got to meet with um, Lisa, um, who talked about the staff concerns and uh, we're having problem. And I think we've talked about this already at a previous meeting about the picnic table being moved. Correct. Yes, everyone. Well, I know we did on the other the other day when we met. How right. it's going? To... Yeah, and so we suspect it's next door, but we don't know for sure. And the staff would really like to have a camera out there. So um, I looked into a um, like one of those wildlife cameras you can put, but they're like one hundred and fifty dollars, or anywhere from seventy five to a hundred. And then you know you have to have an app, uh, and and there's a whole issue of who, where, what phone is that going to be on, and so forth. So it's really to me really important that ho we can get this um, on the seventeenth passed for the security um, system, because that would include the outdoor cameras, and that would definitely solve that problem. Uh, for us to be able to view who might be doing this, all right. Um, <clears throat> the other issue was the, the statues that are by the, the window near the, in the children's area. Um, they were full of lichen and, and whatnot, and I've, I've, I have cleaned them off, and then Faith came with me, and we looked at it, and they just, they need to be totally painted. I was just going to try to touch it, but they'll have to be totally painted. So... Um, so that's got to be done. But the bigger point, uh, a thing I think about that though is that those little statues, um, they're they're cute, but they're nobody sees them. 
Right. You know, they're, they're hidden away. And uh, well, I, while I understand the idea was for the children to look out the window and see them, I'm not sure that, you know, how good that is. So it's something that everyone should probably, the next time you go to the library, go on the side, look at them, and think about, should we move them out and out towards the front of the library? I don't know how Johan. I didn't talk to Johanna. I don't know how she feels about it. So obviously we're going to have to get her input. And it would probably be a pretty big job because they're on um, big pile, uh, uh, like telephone. They look like wooden pylons there. Yeah, right? yeah. So, I, I, I mean, that's something that doesn't have to be done immediately, but I think it's a project that the we need to look at. And well, um, what what brought that up as a thing to do? Well, um, a, a patron. Uh, well, a patron. Several patrons men, uh, mentioned to Johanna about statues, how they were really looking poor looking, and so forth. And so, uh, when I looked at them, uh, like I said, they just they were covered with all this lichen and moss and all of that. And um, but then also the paint has chipped away. They're concrete. They're made out of concrete. So, so they need they do need to be painted. So that's that's what prompted that. Now the staff hasn't talked about moving them at all. Uh, I think that's something that like when Maxine and I were there and, and Faith we were just talking about. It's just hidden away. And in order to go back there, you really have to go by that whole HVAC, you know, air conditioner system. And do we really want that? And so. It's, it's, like I said, I think it's a project. We have to think about it. Maybe Johanna and the rest of the staff say, no, just leave it alone. And right. I, I, I think that's the basics. Ask them what they want, and then we yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, oh, but they want to paint it. They, they definitely want it fixed anyways. But there's a long-term project. M mm. My concern is the security. I think uh, because... The other thing that I suggested to Lisa, I said, if if we can't put a camera up, then maybe we can put up some more shrubbery there, or we can put up a um, like a lattice, uh, a piece of lattice, and put with vines on it or something um, to give them some more privacy and perhaps get him well whoever is coming on the property to not come on the property. So. Um, Hopefully we will. Yeah, if they it. probably saw a camera or something out there, they'd probably be a little less reluctant to be putzing with our stuff. Well, and not only that, but if we had whoever is doing this, then uh, we need to then, then we can go to the police chief and say, look, we have it on film. We, we, this is who, and then they can do more um, to do that. Now, if we get the system, if it's approved on the 17th, then that's great. We can then you know, fast, try to fast forward with that and try to get that outdoor cameras done. If it doesn't Who's get going to do that? Who is going to do that, Combi? Ackworth. Ackworth is the one that put the, the bid in for it. Um, if it doesn't get approved, which I hope not, I mean, I hope it, it will pass, then we then are going to have to deal with at least doing some kind of a camera. Or, you know, I don't know whether we use friends for the money, uh, we do a, a fundraiser or something, but we need, we, we really do need to do something. I think so. Because the staff, they, they want to be able to go out and use the picnic table. And they should be able to. And it, nobody should be coming on and moving our property. So remember, he sprayed the the lights with black paint. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened to a security camera. Well, you have to. Yeah, but it would be you know it would be viewed. That would be real vandals on that. That that would if we had uh, if Hack would put in a security camera and it got. Spray painted, then that would definitely be. But you can just cover your face, so you're not. You're not. Nobody's going to know who you are. Yeah. Well, you... here's the good news: is the cameras are for us and for the park, and so right. it has a bigger appeal. So let's get people to vote for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I right now I'm committed for October 17th to be elsewhere, and so I can't go to town meeting to be there. So if if something changes, I will go. Um, but if any, if anyone is going to go, I, and and there's questions in the audience about it, I, I wanted everyone to be able to, or people ask us to say, you know, we've had some minor vandalism, and we really feel that it's in, imperative on our part to to have the outside cameras now. Right. Um, when we're talking to people and you know trying to get their support for the town meeting, when you said that the table was moved, 
What exactly was it? Was it just moved a little bit or moved far? Or? It's moved constantly. The staff will put it one place where they want it, and then it's moved. Uh, and but then I mean, they like put it to another five area. feet or so, Barbara? Well, it's put up. A, a, whoever's doing it is putting up right up against the bushes, right. you know, and, and where the HVAC system is. And they don't want to sit right next to the bushes. There's plenty of room there. Do you remember that somebody was moving? We had that big hole with that uh, live wire in it, and Randall put a um, cone on oh. top of it. Mm -hmm. Somebody moved the cone, the same thing. I would make sure the cone was there, and then the next day it would be moved. And that was the live wire thing, a yeah. live wire in a box. It's a similar spot. The picnic table's in, in a similar spot. Well, actually, they originally wanted it by the tree because they liked that. Yeah. And they gave up on that because, you know, it's getting hard to move it all the way to the tree. So that's why I like Convy's term of minor vandalism because that also includes the previous things. And we don't want to say, right. you know, but, uh, yes, yeah, somebody painted the... Um, the, the light over the door on the side, you know, and the front lights, remember when it was lights. dark? And yeah. We didn't even realize it for weeks. <laughs> we thought the light bulbs went out. It was actually the electrician who told us it was, and so it was paint. Um, so those were fairly recent. That happened during my time, all those things. Could you change? My point, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, could you chain the table to the tree? So we, we can't move we, it? We've discussed that. Mm. Uh, oh, I, it's a heavy table. It's a oh, very, I know. I, yeah, it's I, a heavy, heavy, heavy table. I think it's a great, I mean, if, if in fact we don't get security cameras, yeah, we may have to do that. Although that tree is really little. So, um, but uh, I mean, the point is it, it's our property and nobody should be coming on the property and moving this heavy table. If but that's you know, where we want it. That's where it should be. And the staff's not I, doing that, I, right, Barbara? Right. No. Cases. Uh, and Johanna put a sign on it. Please. Right, yes. <laughs> yeah, there was a sign on there, yeah. 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 What, but Jim? When I was investigating cases, it was really important to get a clear description of the conduct that's in question and like saying they move the table i think most people say a oh, big deal i go to the park and move the tables all the time uh but here we have a very heavy table you're saying yes oh yes and, and it's moved a distance of several feet yes at least very inconvenient positions for the staff and uh, in addition to that, there's minor vandalism, such mm -hmm. as black painting the light. But I, I think the, to make a more compelling argument uh, at a town meeting or wherever, uh, you have to be rather explicit about what occurred. I well, that is, that, is that okay to do when you're speaking to the whole town and the person might be sitting there? I mean, it's a little... Sure, if the person's right? guilty, as long as you're not, you're not saying yeah. he did it. No, saying, we don't. This is what happened to the table. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Go ahead. Know, I'm sorry, Jim. Yeah. Somebody stole a, uh, a uh, an election sign off my lawn uh, the other day, and uh, I can tell people that the sign was stolen. I can't accuse anybody of doing it because I don't know. You didn't have a camera, Jim. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, I did check into Ring. Yeah. No, I've got, uh, I, I mean, I just put in just uh, my little bling cameras. There are three little cameras that cost me $198. And I can see out they're outside. They clip right on the, the, the vinyl siding there. And I can see outside. I can see right. the backyard and it's, it's great. And then I have, I have similar ones only wise in Florida and I can see my house in Florida. So, but that's an app and it has to be on your, your camera and sure. the issues, who at the library then would have to put it on their app. And then what do they do? And, you know, when they're off, not working. They should not be have to work. Okay. That's so. how ring. That's how ring worked too. Because I just had that installed at my house three weeks ago. It yeah. does videos and people that motion and all kinds of stuff. But I asked right. the installer that did it, and he had told me, yeah. unless someone was in a library all the time, it's an app like you're talking about. It's on my phone. It would. It would not benefit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, think, Jim, I think there's a. It, 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 you know, it, and maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, and if so, I apologize. But I know when I was investigating, very often you'd have somebody say, the boss yelled at me. 
And I'd say that's not evidentiary. I have to know what did they say exactly. Right. And very often when they told me what was exactly said, the person who had to type the guy's affidavit would object to the language and we tell them that's what they said. <laughs> when you go to court, you have to use the language, you know? But here, I mean, uh, a lot of people listening to what we've said or what I've heard is saying, well, you know, it's, it belongs, it's public it's town property. It's right near the park. The, the table belongs to uh, the town. And if somebody wants to eat there and they move the table, what's the big deal? Well, I think so we're the making the... Is, you have to explain that. Why? Why it's... It's a, a private area, though, really, where the right. staff go, right? And the table belongs mm -hmm. to the library because yeah. it was donated. But we and that's why I thought we could just say minor vandalism. And if we just say painted the lights i mean who that's very clear the front light and the light over the but it wasn't moved just for it's mischievously moved to an inconvenient area and it's very heavy and uh you know there's just Where we're making the assumption it is the the man next door and he moves the table so it's out of his view and that's why we think yeah. it's up against the bushes. I mean, I would vote for getting, buying some more Arbor Vitae, you know, spending a little more money and get the six to eight foot one so they're already ahead of the game as far as growing. And so then you're going to really block his view. Uh, Condi, wasn't there something about he wanted passageway through to the park? Right. And uh, there's... But is that... I mean, is off. that is right? Well, I, I mean, there are two areas so that if we blocked up the first one, he would still have down yeah. further to get through. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't anticipate a town meeting that, I mean, any of you who've been to town meeting, nobody wants to get into real discussions. Get you know, in contact. If, yeah, I mean, so I think if people say you know, it's presented as minor vandalism that will probably be sufficient but uh, at the same time i understand what jim is saying should should we need to go further we we could go further but and be prepared it may be that um charlie knicky is going to speak on it also because it's, it's for the fair. park also yeah. i think there's going to be some emphasis on it, also be very careful not to say who you suspect right exactly right. Yes. well charlie could, said there's it, there's been incidents in the pavilion over the years uh, Yes, so, it could be. It could be two teenagers who are coming and doing it. For all we know, I mean, seriously, yeah. I mean, we we think it's next door, but we don't know that. So, yeah. and, and, and Jim, no, excuse me, say, just so you know, he has admitted to spraying the lights. Right. Yes, we know that. Yeah, we know I, that. Jim doesn't know it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. But anyway, so I just wanted to, to convey to you, you know, the staff is, is very concerned about it. Um, Barbara's already spoken to uh, Peter Furry to do the, um, the groundskeeping part of it. And I think, Barbara, he should probably break it up and do some in the fall and then some in the okay, spring. I will address that. But Don, did you, uh, you put something in chat. Did you want to say anything? Well, no. That's just, I mean, that's like a $10 fake camera you could put up to see if that would deter them at all. Um, it flashes lights and it looks like a real camera. It's not hooked up to anything, but that mm -hmm. might be a short term thing, okay. you know, yeah. a scarecrow maybe to keep them away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You wanna, well, could could you know send that an email, Don? Because I don't sure. know. I mean, it's nine dollars and free shipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll know after the seventeenth. You know, ho hopefully, it's going to get passed. It got approved by the select board. You know, I don't anticipate a problem, but you know, better to go in and and have all our ducks in a row than the other way around. You know, so. so about Peter Frary, did you know he injured himself? No, he fell off something. I found out from uh, Mary Robinson, who also has him work on her yard. Yeah. So he hasn't. I don't think he's been able to do anything for us. Um, okay. But uh, he knows about it, you know, and you know. Yeah, that's. <laughs> but that's why it hasn't happened yet. Right. Well, uh, my thought was that since we've got the azaleas and the rhododendrons, he really shouldn't do those. He, you know, because they won't bloom. And mm -hmm. so, if he just takes care of the other ones and takes out that dead thing, that'll that'll get going. And yeah. I think the staff will feel better too that you know we are addressing. Yeah, the, he, he knows about that. Yeah. Um, when you mentioned Amazon, Don, it reminded me that. 
Uh, the, all of the Amazon stuff is now on Viki. Um, I don't know if you knew that Amazon was even hitting up Lisa on her personal email with these uh, Dunning emails or whatever you call them, you owe us. So um, Vicky called up Amazon, got, I don't know how Lisa's personal email was on the account. Jeff was still on there. I was oh, on geez. there. So she, she cleared that up and put it on her name on there. And it's a problem with the town. I mean, I can't do anything more about it. So it's, it's on Vicky's desk now. So we, we don't use that account anymore. But we do have access to the town account. Okay. We're not using Amazon for DVDs. We're going with Midwest Tape, and I'm a lot happier. <laughs> The other thing is we need a hose for the library. <laughs> we need a hundred foot hose because our um, arboretum that we planted are, and I didn't even think about it during the summer, but they are beginning to show some stress. So I gave them a good watering last week and then we got the rain um, and hopefully we're going to get some more today. But if we keep going in the fall, um, and so we don't, the library itself doesn't have a, live, a hose, right? Barbara. No, I thought that's the one we've been using, isn't it? That's. I think that's actually Anita, the Anita, the, the Anita Smith group. I don't know that. I, I could know. ask Mary. Well, we need a hundred foot one because it's not long enough. Okay, you got to use so buckets. You know? How do you want to go about that? Do you want? Um... I want to go out and I want to buy a hundred foot hose. That's what okay, I want to do. Okay, so give me the. Receipt. I don't want to be putting buckets of uh, out in those rider privé. I don't mind bringing a hose out and giving it a good watering while I go in and browse and get my books. But <laughs> so we need a volunteer to water them. I think we talked about this, right? Well, if we don't, if we don't continue to get rain, yeah, we're going to have to make sure that it gets really. They get some good water for the winter, because otherwise they they won't they won't do. I don't know if they'll make it. So, so. All right, well, if you get the hose and give me the receipt, you can also let me know like exactly what we have to do, and I'll, I'll get okay. a volunteer or Emily or somebody to yeah. do it. Uh, you'll okay. have to let me know like how many times a week, how many, you know, yeah. all of that. Okay. Make sure you give me the receipt because I think I still have a receipt from the last thing you got before COVID. <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay. When you went to Florida. <laughs> no, so that's all I have to say. Any other questions of anybody? Any other new business then? Did um did the other trustees that were elected get um sworn in? I did. I haven't yet. I have tried, but I haven't yet. I went I, there. You know, I didn't even think of it until today actually and then i thought are they open i don't i don't know so you can make an appointment with lucy and actually um you can uh for, if she can't do it in the parking lot she has been letting people in um they're they are really discouraging people going into the town hall i yeah. mean i can go in but they're really keeping it to a minimum so like i saw um, Martha, the assessor, meeting somebody in the parking lot. So, but they, oh. they are accommodating people. So, Beth, you know, if you call Lucy Dalton, she'll. I did. I have an appointment with her. I went. She didn't come out. Uh, I went home. She called and finally called me back. <laughs> anyway, it was just a, a mix up. Um, a mix up. You have to make an appointment and then you have to call when you get there because she. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have to call when I get there too, because I I don't have the key to the town hall. Yeah, and and Don, do you does your wife? Are you and your wife still want to switch? Is that still? Would you yeah, want, I mean, when when it's convenient and possible, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's very interested. Okay, so how should we deal with that? Should we just wait till the election? Can't she no. just be nominated if it's far away from an election? Well, let's see. The election coming up then, uh, um, do we do we have any board members who's going to be elected in November? Didn't the pri didn't we just elect everybody? No, the, the yeah, you have to wait until May. And no. combined so with the no. primary. That was a primary? You have to go again? No, no, no. No, the, no. The okay. Yeah. In the primary right. were conducted so, at the same time. So Don could what he could do is he could resign 
And then we then at the same well. time, we then put in right. his, what's your wife's first name, Don? Pamela. Pamela. We could then say, Pamela Bernier is, we'd like to nominate Pamela Bar Bernier to take his place. And that has to go before the select board, right? Yeah. Well, we vote with the select board. The trustees vote with the select board. I know, but yeah. we got to go there. Remember all that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, probably yes. not. It's probably just all Zoom. So it'll all be Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Select board's on Zoom, and it's it's a little hard on Zoom. Has anybody been to a select board meeting on Zoom? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you're you're muted on the budget. <laughs> yeah. So you're muted, and uh, you, so you. I'm I'm sure though. You know, if you were on the select board agenda, they would unmute you, I would hope. <laughs> but, yes, they do. Yeah. Okay. So, Don, maybe you should think about how long you want to keep doing it. Like, when is the next election? Uh, May. So, do you, if you don't want to hang on till May, then we could do this route, you know, of uh, you resign yes. and then that's an option. I think yeah, I'll talk to her tonight and figure out what's going on and, you know, yeah. I'll let you guys know in an email. Okay. I mean, what I have you guys? They expect COVID to keep going for quite a while. Like um, Greenfield Community College is going to do virtual in the spring because I was on that user council meeting. There were two community colleges and they expect to be virtual in spring. And so I wouldn't be surprised if the Zoom like, board meetings keep going that way too. Mm -hmm. Our department head meeting was in person. You know, well, six nice. <laughs> You guys, I I apologize, but I have another meeting. <laughs> um. So, is there anything else we need to cover? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, good job, Barbara and crew. Good to see yes. everybody. Gotta go. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Right. See you later, Beth. Bye. So that's Bye. probably as Bye. good a time as any. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So I make a motion to adjourn. I second. Okay. Maxine seconds. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm not going to do a roll call because no, it was a motion fine. to close. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, November 5th, 6.30. Same time, yes. same place. Yes. <laughs> oh, are we going to make an appointment? Are we going to um, put a date for the next Zoom meeting? November 5th. Yeah. November 5th. Thank okay. you, Jessica, for doing the okay. Zoom. Okay. No Take oh, yeah. care. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you Bye. all. Thank you for everything. Thank you for doing so. Come in. Come in on a Tuesday or Wednesday. It's starting next week, Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Good. Bye. 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 Bye.